Um, first of all, then, uh, in terms of what Alicia Cairns of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the UK has said this evening, the suggestion is that Yevgeny Prigozhin has been killed uh, on this pl uh, in this plane crash. Uh, what is your analysis? Where does that leave us? Is Europe safer tonight? <laughs> Well, first of all, thanks for having me on board, and you've had some great commentary and some great uh, uh, expl explanations already offered. Um, I would just offer a little bit of caution at this point about we're, we're really sort of leaping to answers when there's a lot of dust to settle. And remember, this is Russia, and they essentially completely control the media and the reporting so they will have it all tuned up to their message and to provide the impact that they want. And so we're going to need to know a little bit more. Again, I agree mm. with many of the things already said this morning, but I, I just believe we need to be a little careful about leaping to what we think happened. Sure, and your caution is understandable. Just to say that Russian state TV is reporting that Yevgeny Prigozhin has been killed. The US State Department says it's no surprise if he has been killed. Um, and so I suppose with that in mind, General, um, and, and we will continue to exercise caution as we await official confirmation, of course, uh, but where, what does this do for the stability of Russia, for the stability of Europe, uh, and for the war in Ukraine. What is the security situation this evening? So I would offer that uh, that this is just another indicator if, in fact, he was killed, if, in fact, it was deliberate. This is another indicator of how uh, unsettled Mr. Putin is in his current position. Mm. Uh, Prigozhin did embarrass uh, Putin, Prigozhin uh, made uh, an in incredible impact by the fact that some of the military did not oppose him, and he was sort of given a, a hero's uh, welcome as he departed the southern part of Russia for Belarus. And so uh, I would say we're in a little less stable situation than we were before, because it is clear that Mr. Putin is going to take whatever measures he has to to assure his grip on the country. Now, how that translates to the battlefield, I don't know. I would join several who have said that this will cause dissension inside Mr. Putin's forces because, again, some of them sort of really accepted Mr. Prigozhin in the southern part of, of Russia. And additionally, of course, you have all of the, the Wagner group uh, forces now that are going to be split in allegiance on who is next in charge, do we actually work for Russia or not, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that, that there is some caution required that this is going to be a bit destabilizing, at least in the short term. That's interesting, the destabilizing part of this, because I was just considering, General, whether there is strength in Putin putting his name to this uh, if he chooses to do that. Is there strength in that? Or could he do what he has done in the past and, in inverted commas, false flag this, blame someone else? Uh, perhaps Ukraine, for example. I'm just trying to assess what is strategically Putin's next move. So you basically chose the two main uh, paths that he could go. He could come out now and show himself the strong man, and he makes the point that I am going to rule by force and I will eliminate those who oppose me. That's a very viable path for him. The other one is exactly as you lay it out. Um, th they may try to blame it on somewhere else, someone else. I do agree with your previous commentator that that the speed of which they have made this pronunciation that he was on this airplane and he was killed seems to tell me that this is a uh, a storyline that has been well baked and is is going to roll out according to plan. So, uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen. He could go either way. General Philip Breedlove, we are very grateful for your time this evening. Thank you very much.